talk while you clean up. No, we, um, we'll take about 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, what we wanted to cover is just really talk about carbon fiber, because uh, since we have the first production carbon fiber trike on the market, uh, there might be some things about carbon fiber uh, that you don't realize. And I, I'm not, I don't want to turn this into any type of a sales pitch, but there's some, uh, some things that I've learned a tre tremendous amount uh, from guys like Lars. I'm not an engineer or a designer uh, of bicycles. so. Um, I, but I found it tremendously interesting, and we just like to share a little bit of that with you. Um, Bichetta got into carbon fiber really because of the tie arrow. Does anybody remember the Bichetta tie arrow? So that was, uh, I think it was the first titanium uh, trike. We made that from... Bike. Oh, bike, you're right. First titanium bike. Uh, that, what's that? Tie arrow. Oh, tie rush. You're right. The tie rush was the first one. You're right. And and but yeah, they they were. Um, we actually made that from an aircraft spar, uh, which is the tube that goes out into the wings. And there was a bunch of extra material on that that we were able to purchase in 2000, uh, probably the end of 2002. We made that bike for three years, from 2003. Uh, to 2005. It was a, a great seller. We literally could not make enough of them. But the demise of that tri bike uh, took place in 2005 when titanium went from about $100 a pound uh, to $350 a pound. So you can imagine what that does to the price of uh, the, mat the, the bike itself. So we decided we needed something to replace that and we came out with the Carbon Aero 1.0. We started that project in, 2000, in 2005 and came out with that. Um, I believe it was uh, in the fall of 2006 or, or, or winter of 2007. So we, we launched that and, and the Carbon Aero has been probably, if you look at it from a revenue standpoint, the, the best seller. Uh, and we've really become known for having high performance bikes uh, we now have two carbon fiber uh, bikes with the Pelso now that, that we uh, distribute and sell throughout the world. Um, and so uh, we, when we thought about what uh, we needed to do in terms of getting into the trike market, it really was kind of obvious that our entry point was taking advantage of some of the resources that we had and the knowledge, and particularly the production capacity we had in um, in Taiwan, working with what I consider probably the leading carbon fiber production company in the world. Won't tell you who that is, but uh, the only problem was we really didn't know much about trikes and, and we didn't have any design experience. And so uh, in the winter of 2017, uh, Mike Wilkerson sends me an email and he says, hey, look, I found these guys over in Sweden. And I, I remember very distinctly looking up Lars and reading his bio and I'm like, this guy's got a master's degree in carbon fiber production and a designing degree. And I was like, what, and what, what, a, what a great background. And so we decided to reach out to, uh, to Lars and Arthur. Uh, and, and there was another uh, sales guy named Morton that was there. And, and we started a relationship. Uh, we kicked it off with a joint venture uh, that was a little over a year ago. Uh, that we started the, the project uh, and with an option to, uh, to have Lars and um, Arthur move here and, and uh, work now, we'll all work together. And so I think Lars, after spending winters in Sweden and, some, and winters in Florida. And they are still <laughs> much colder than this. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw him shaking out no. there. <laughs> uh, so we, we did that. So what I thought we'd do is talk about um, uh, some of the design considerations that went into carbon fiber of this uh, this really light uh, weight frame that weighs uh, uh, 5.9 pounds um, for for a frame and and we're going to talk about some of the characteristics of carbon fiber uh, and how this brilliant guy here uh, figured out um, how to optimize the structure to create something uh, that is uh, what I consider probably one of the best designed and, and strongest and lightest and, and everything trikes on the market. So kind of the first things... Maybe not the cheapest one. Yeah, not the cheapest. <laughs> At least not to develop. <laughs> no, it, it costs quite a bit of money to develop, but um, probably the first thing that people know about uh, carbon fiber is that it's light, right? It, you know, weighs. And so what, what makes it so light, Lars? Uh, actually, it's uh, light because it's strong. 
Yeah. So you can make it extremely strong or extremely stiff or extremely light. But not all, but not all three, right? Uh, <laughs> usually not at the same time, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you look at the road bikes that are extremely light, they are maybe not that strong anymore. Uh, if you look at the airplane in carbon fiber, I guess that it's rather strong because it's not nice to fly in a plane that crashes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, but but depending on how you design it, you can get a big difference between how they actually are mm -hmm. working. So, so Lars, tell us about how you made the design choices in the how you laid up the carbon fiber to trade off strength uh, for lightness. It's a long story. Uh, All right, make it short though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But point out but a like few of the things. Okay, if you have this trike, um, it's uh, like a few hundred pieces of carbon fiber. They are more or less like, a s like a stickers mm -hmm. uh, that make this complete laminate. So what you see on the surface is just one layer. On one spot, on some spots is maybe like four or five layers, and other spots is maybe 20 layers. And then you have different directions, and then you have different types of carbon fiber. Um, so it's not like metal, actually. <laughs> it's very far from metal. So, um, so I think uh, um, if you look at this, construction at the moment. Uh, in this area I'm going to get a lot of stress because you're where you're sitting. In this area we will get a little stress. You're going to have much more material here, much less material here, you, and then you can get different uh, stiffness in different directions depending on how you put the fibers in and we have what kind of fibers you are using. So it's um, it's really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so we, when Lars had spent a lot of time doing this with the CT 1.0, but when it, it, the CT 1.0 that Lars had built was done completely by hand, and so we the had one is a yes, made by hand too, yeah, but, but it's it's produ it's mass produced though. Yeah. So. What were some of the challenges that you had to change? And talk about some of the changes that we made to the original design to, to um, meet those challenges. Okay, uh, the CT1 was made in Sweden by me and a few co-workers. Mm -hmm. We worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. It took a lot of time to make these. Every about six company. weeks per bike. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for like or four. Persons. <laughs> <laughs> and I never got any money for it, even though I charged a lot. I think I maybe charged for the, for the more, most expensive track, I charged $20,000, still didn't do any money. Uh, yeah. uh, because it takes a lot of time. Um, that was uh, our own production. When you go to Taiwan, they are not doing exactly the same as we were doing, so we had to rethink. But the good thing was that we knew how to do it. So we tried to keep the same shape and uh, we didn't know if they could do this strange looking thing because it this doesn't look like a bike. In, in fact, they, we were concerned and they were about even the ability for them to, to produce this because it's this very complicated. This, in is, this is the, okay, you're using molds in steel and these molds are uh, 10 times bigger than the molds you use for uh, making a carbon fiber frame, stand the diamond frame. Mm -hmm. So they are 10 times heavier and maybe 10 times more expensive. <laughs> yeah, the molds are over, you know, probably well over th thousands of pounds actually. They're huge blocks of steel so to make this. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of CNC time. Mm. So actually we took our own uh, old frame 3D scanned it because it was made by hand, and uh, we CAD everything. My coworker made the most of most of it, uh, depending on how we knew that they're going to produce it in the end. And then we made some uh, modifications to to make it easier to produce for them and make it better. So the the look it looks <laughs> the same, uh, but nothing is the same actually. <laughs> so so uh, one of the things that we did. Uh, with the boom 
uh, is our, you know, Bichetta always had a teardrop uh, tube, and so we changed that because it gives it a, a lateral strength, so the tube, your boom, doesn't twist at all in the, uh, in the frame there. Because so, nice I've known to... Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you won't run to the, when, in that problem with, with this uh, trike. Um, another thing, so we, we did the, uh, the first couple iterations. This is not something you get right out of the gate. Um, so the first one was, at Lars, we, we tried it out and it was inherently unrideable. Uh, and uh, they didn't put the, the strength in the right places. Because so they didn't follow their the directions. Their yes, I know. <laughs> but we were able to get a second one done. And then we, we looked at, you know, uh, tested it out there. It wasn't perfect. Um, but we were able to get something, uh, you know, that was rideable that we got some feedback on. Uh, and then, uh, then we did another one, uh, which we saw was the prototype at the, uh, the show. And one of the things, the feedback from the show, we didn't know how much it was going to, to you know, we, you guess on how much weight is it going to support. Everybody asked, you know, how, what's the max weight on this thing? The two things two people wanted to know was how light is it going to be? And what's the max weight on it going to be? And a lot of people um, was, was disappointed because we were talking about two, 225 pounds there. And we thought there was a lot of uh, um, uh, people that may not get to ride it that would be very interested because uh, the other thing we found out is that even though we're designing a racing trike uh, at Recumbent Com, we found out that a lot of people just liked it because it was really light that they could pick it up. And so we made some more design changes based on that. Um, so in the, some of the design changes were we added uh, holes here for in, this, in the new frame that's coming out uh, for production to put racks on. Uh, we've got now a touring accessory. So we're, we're really designing this for two use cases, a very light touring trike as well as something that will go uh, uh, very fast. And look sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And, and look sexy <laughs> while you're doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. So and that's, that's actually another point, uh, Lars, is that um, Lars told me about carbon fibers. The, the fact that it, he, Lars is not only a carbon fiber expert, but he's a designer too. And carbon fiber is, according to you, the, one of the best materials to make whatever you want. Uh, so more, more or less, and you can integrate a lot of functionality. So the seats are integrated and it's only one piece. Mm -hmm. And we have like a wing shape here to give some suspension. So the shape is it's not tubes anymore, but you can make it like tubes. Um, but do, if you want to do something in metal like this, it's, it's more or less impossible. impossible. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, but and for metal, usually yeah. you have uh, one thickness and one in every tube. And this one, you can have it different in every each area of it, actually. So yeah. So, um, and that's all, Lars made a point about the suspension here. We, we did that. Um, so I'll, um, I'll wrap up, we'll do, ask, I'll uh, open it up for any questions. It's not um, real suspension, but, but the passive. Yes, passive suspension. So the way we design it, it doesn't need to have, a, you know, a shock absorber on it because these wings on here are really designed to take that uh, shock absorption uh, um, there for you. So uh, it, it's, you can design that right into the shape itself. Um, the last thing is that uh, we were able to, to we, we beefed the frame up a little bit um, to make it a little stronger. We took some carbon fiber out of some places and we moved it all around to basically keep the weight about the same. But we were able to increase the uh, strength of it to something that we felt very comfortable with. So we send, it, we send every one of our bikes uh, out to... Uh, a test facility in California and what they do is they put a big sandbag on it and they literally jump on the frame they start at 650 pounds they jump a hundred thousand times on the frame if it doesn't break we go to 750 thousand and then uh, this is for our bikes as well as we did this for the trike and we then we go to 850 uh, pounds yeah 850 pounds bouncing it's like a huge sandbag just pounding on it and uh, and then you know, every other one of our bikes uh, broke during that process, and guess where this broke? Never. It never broke. Wow. Wow. So we, we felt our bikes have a 250 pound limit, and because this is stronger than anything we've ever made, 
Um, we feel comfortable now offering a lifetime warranty on the frame. So we were saying it will never break wow. or else we'll replace it. And we've done that with all our Bichetta frames. I believe, and, and Pat, you tell me if we're wrong, but we're the only company that does and tests all our frames uh, to be able to offer this lifetime warranty. But do you know of any other company that tests their frames like this? Yeah, do you know? Or? Uh, I don't know how that, people test their frames. Yeah. I, but I, I believe that we're the only company that does this. Um, but it's very strong. <laughs> yeah. Why is there 250 pounds of red isolation? 275 now. I mean, why? I mean, oh, well, this, uh, well, we, so, yeah, that, that's the rule of thumb. The rule of thumb is, is take the max weight that it made it at and divide by three. Yeah, and then round it to something that's, you know, reasonable without a point three in it. Yeah. Practicality, if you have someone that weighs 500 pounds, they wouldn't fit on it. Yes, you're right. Very uncomfortable. That's the other design consideration. Make the handlebars a little narrower. <laughs> yeah. uh, question over here. Is the warranty transferable or original owner only? Uh, it's original owner only. That, that's with all our products. So. Yes? Can carbon fiber be 3D printed? Oh, that's interesting. He will tell you. Uh, you can 3D print carbon fiber, but it will be plastic with carbon fiber powder in it and that is definitely not the same as carbon fiber with continuous fiber yeah. so yeah. it's plastic uh, this this one has plastic in it to keep these fibers together but it's ex completely different actually so yes layers like this yes is it oven oh yes it is it's uh, uh, so it's cured uh, with a balloon in it uh, at a very high pressure 250 psi or no 25,000 or 25 uh, no, 2500 no, is it? Two, all right. no no 250 all right psi psi yeah. and it's heated up to 180 degrees celsius so how much is that in fahrenheit well, i don't know it's like oh, three and 300 pounds it's very hot yeah. <laughs> it's cured it's for two hours they put in the oven and yeah, yeah. so it's a process yeah so yeah. The, it, it has epoxy in it. It's a plastic that uh, harden and make it unified during that process. So the factory we are using, they are actually the only factory that are used uh, making their own uh, carbon fiber. They're making their own weave, uh, making the carbon fiber weave, and then they make the pre peg It's called the the one that they use for putting in here. Mm. <laughs> and so they have full control. Question. And then the third question I'm sure yeah. that everyone asks is how much does it cost? Um, th this is a, it's a 6300 uh, bucks is the, for the complete bike. We've got time, maybe we just one more question. You had, you had one? The color through the carbon or is yeah. it? You know. well, you, okay. Yeah, well I know okay, but you this, know. <laughs> okay. The first one will not be like this. It will be matte carbon fiber. Yeah. With a clear coat. Yeah, well, clear coat. But uh, matte carbon fiber, uh, because it looks best and it's actually much lighter than yeah. it. Yeah, one thing is there's what maybe a, a half a pound, a, a three quarters of a pound of paint on this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and so it bottom. yeah, it's on the bottom. So, in, and we, we, we brought three different colors and design styles to Recumbent Con. And, uh, Lars said that I like this the best. This was my vote, but Lars liked the the black one, and he thought it looked the sexiest. Yeah. And he was right. So 60% of our customers, or the people that came by the booth, said I like this carbon fiber black with racing stripes in the in the back here. These are now uh, different colors. Uh, you can hold that up there. No so, purple. no, no purple. <laughs> but I, you know. And uh, Ice, what do you say about black? Yeah, what do you say about uh, black eyes? What do you say about black? Is it good looking? Is it black you could just choose now? <laughs> <laughs> because the first carbon thing I heard weed. when I came to yes. the show was... They know it's carbon fiber. Yes, yeah, well that's right. All right, well thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I've had a great time here with you all. Thanks for racing the bike and we appreciate it.